Hi guys, welcome back to another Creative Tab tutorial. Now, in today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at different file formats which can be used in video editing. So, we're going to look at some uh, digital container file formats and some image sequences, okay? Um, now, the aim of today is to give you an understanding of which ones you might want to use when and where. So, we're going to start with MOV. Um, so, MOV files, which are also known as QuickTime movie files, um, they were developed by Apple. Um, quite a while ago. So um, the, you're probably quite familiar with these ones because they're quite popular. Now first of all the pros, they are MOV files are very easily editable and they're very very widely compatible so a lot of media players um, will will play MOV files. Obviously QuickTime is one of them, um, VLC and they are quite you know um, both PC and Macs do can read them as long as you've got that QuickTime um, quick player as well on PC. Um, but yeah, um, they tend to be smaller than AVI files in file size with, with a similar quality so they can compress um, with better algorithms and better methods and you can get very, very same, same quality but smaller file size generally than AVI depending on the codec you're using. Um, now when it comes to cons, um, the, the con I would say is they can't be used, um, especially on a PC, without the QuickTime um, player. So that is potentially a con and some of the codecs, you want to be careful which codecs you're using, because some of the codecs can compress the image too far to the point where you may start to get artifact in, you'll lose quality and it'll really dull down the colours and you'll lose a lot of colour. Okay. So the next one we're going to talk about <clears throat> is going to be FLV. Now you may well have heard of FLV, um, also known as Flash Video. It was originally developed by Macromedia before Adobe bought out Macromedia. Okay, so Adobe bought out Flash and Macromedia, and also Dreamweaver came when they um, bought out Macromedia. But anyway, enough about that. Um, we're going to go into the pros and cons of FLV files now, which should be coming up on screen. So Pro, they're used by Apple and Mac. Uh, no. Mac and PC and also Linux so you know in terms of compatibility quite right a lot of players will play them as well um, so yeah also they're very widely used in browsers and a lot of browsers these days a lot of browsers and their users like you and me um, will quite often have flash player installed loads of things require flash player like some games and you know a lot of video content and quite a lot of the time people will have flash player installed so that, that's a pro um, you'll be always able to should always be able to view them on web um, one of the cons is they're not too common of a file type especially when it comes to high-end video editing uh, if you're working for a high-end editing company or post-production company you won't be using FLVs every day so they're not that common they're ve very common for video shown on web because flash player again like I said nearly every browser should have it installed these days because a lot of things use it and so it's, it's a lot of web video basically. Okay so next on to AVI files another very very common one um, this is also known as audio video interleave it was developed by Microsoft okay this file type now one of the pros of this is with AVI there is a wide range of codecs loads and loads of co codecs um, you've got DivX DNX HD, which I use quite quite often. Um, you got Photo JPEG. Um, I think you got Photo JPEG for API. But what I'm getting at is there's a lot of choice of codecs for whatever kind of use you want. Um, so that's 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 good. Also, most media players will play AVI files. Again, the compatibility is there because it's such a common file type. Very 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 compatible. Okay. Now one of the cons is it doesn't support interactivity, which some files which some file formats do but AVI does not support any interactivity with the user and another con is yeah like I said it's a pro there's lots of codecs but quite often um, in order to play an AVI file you may download an AVI file and think oh, I can play this but it'll be it'll have a codec like DivX is quite a common one if, if you download a video or something and so quite often you'll also have to download the codec because what happens is when it's getting exported, the video will be encoded with a codec, and when you play it back, that codec needs to be on the system to decode that information and play it back. If it's not there, you have to download the codec. So, with a large choice of codecs, being a pro, then 
it's also a con because you may have to download multiple codecs to play different files which you kind of receive. So that can be a con. Now, next one we're going to talk about is MP4, which is moving, well, MP4, also known as MPEG4, that's Moving Picture, ugh, moving picture Expert Group 4. So, one of the pros is you get very, with MP4s, you get very good quality, or you can get good quality with a very, kind of very low file size, which is a good thing. Um, very, very compatible. Again, a lot of media players will play MP4 files, which is good really really good. Um, they're very good for file sharing and streaming um, so if you're file sharing with somebody or streaming stuff um, again mp4s are good because of the low file size where they can maintain that quality. Um, what I will say about that quality is if you're not careful, if you're not using the right settings, the right bitrate, the right codec, it is easy to render one out and have some artifacts and loss of colour and loss of quality so that's a con. If you don't kind of know what you're doing with the codec, with your choice of codec and with the codec you're using and with the bitrate, um, it's easy to kind of get artifact in and even just loss of colour or loss of quality, so that, that can be a con. And also, due to that, um, you don't really tend to edit with MP4s, like I, I would never edit with an MP4 file personally, um, because if you re-render, if you've got an MP4 file, there's a lot of compression gone into that, even if there is good quality there. If you render that out again, you're going to start seeing a loss of quality, so they're not files that you would edit with. Okay, so, so far we've discussed um, file formats, which are, the, the, the four file formats we've discussed are actually um, video containers. They contain audio streams, video streams, and something called metadata, which is basically a, a file which kind of tells the computer how to play it back. Um, so that's like a container, think of it like a little box which has audio, video, and this metadata, so it's just sort of data for the computer. That's a like a little sweet tin full of these three three things, okay? Now, what we're going to talk about now is image sequences. These are literally a sequence of images, hence image sequences. So if you have um, 10 seconds and you render it out as a TIFF sequence, that'll rent and it's 25 frames per second, that'll be 25 frames per second times the 10 seconds, so 250 TIFF images. Now. Coming from a visual effects background, um, I'm very used to kind of using image sequences. So we're going to talk about two of them in today's video. There will be another video that goes and talks about OpenEXR files, Targa files, and uh, DPX files, stuff like that. But for today, we're going to be looking at um, TIFF sequences and PNG sequences. Now, TIFF sequences, also known as Tagged Image File Format. That's what TIFF stands for. Now, the pros and cons. Um, a pro would be that as TIFF sequences are often used in, in VFX industry as well. Um, editing and VFX are kind of hand in hand, so there's are two industries which also which do use these kind of processes. So that would be a pro in, in my opinion. Um, also, TIFFs can support up to 32 bits per channel, so a massive amount of colour, which is really good. And they also can support um, transparency as well, which again, depending on what you're doing, can be really helpful. Um, one of the cons is if you're using a TIFF sequence, they can eat up a lot of space. So let's say again, 10 seconds, you've got 25 frames per second, that's 250 um, TIFF images. If you're using 32 bits per channel, you're looking at a lot of hard drive space there. So that would be one con of TIFFs. And the other sequence we're going to look at is a PNG sequence, also known as Portable Network Graphics. Okay. Um, they, these came about as a kind of go-between between, between GIFs or GIFs, however you want to say it, and JPEGs. Um, so it's kind of almost in between the two. Um, anyway, let's look at these. So the pros, um, PNGs can support transparency, which is good. They can also, if you've got like an image which has got quite a lot of bland colours and not a load of detail and like a lot of high dynamic range, if it's quite, you know, Again, like you know, a lot of flat surfaces, like the wall in the background and the whiteboard up there. Actually, you can get a low file size with still a lot of the quality there. The con is once you've got an image which is large and it's got a lot of colour detail in there, and a, you know, a, like maybe we're talking 16 bits per channel, but you know, millions of colours. Once you've got a lot of detail in there, basically, this is where the file size 
to maintain that detail with a PNG sequence, the file size can quickly get high. So again, with kind of um, more bland stuff like, you know, a blank wall texture and, and the whiteboard and stuff like that, actually you'll maintain a lot of the quality for very low file size. As soon as you start getting a lot more detail in there and a lot of these colours, you're looking at big file sizes and it can jump quite quickly. So that would be the con for um, PNG sequences. So, today kind of covered, um, what's that, I think six file formats. Um, so hopefully that's been of help for you. Um, if it has, feel free to check out the rest of our video technologies videos or some of our software videos. Um, leave a like and a subscribe and hopefully see you again in a video soon. Cheers.